peace, everyone. This is Peds from Visual Caffeine. It's been a minute, but we're still here, strong, spreading the word. Um, this is going to be episode 99 with a very special guest, the only person to be on Visual Caffeine twice. The one, the only, Maxwell Melvins from the Lifers Group. Hey, 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 my name is Golden Boom. I'm one of the ones who didn't listen. I've been in prison for 14 years. This record ain't no joke. Learn the dispense of our sorrow. And don't end up in the belly of the
just like you. I had all the answers, I believed it. Just like you, I had all the answers, I believed it. How's it going, Maxwell? Maxwell? It's, it's going all right. It's going all right, my brother. How's, how's it going there? Uh, it's going great, man. Great to see you. Great to hear your voice. Um, I, I feel real lucky that you're allowing us to spread the word, you know, because um, I don't know if everybody knows about your movement and what you guys yeah. actually did. Um, can you can you just give a quick rundown of what you did, of the life well, is? It, it, it's not a matter of what we did. It's a matter, you know, what we do. And, you know, like the juvenile awareness program has been around for years. It's been around since 1976. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know it best as Scare Straight. And okay. the only reason that they know about that name, that was just a name that was given to it by one of the producers of a film titled Scare Straight. But as I said, it was actually the juvenile awareness program. And uh, I was familiar with the program and, and, and over the years and the work that they've done. And, uh, you know, I got transferred to Rawway prison myself. And, uh, you know, I know that the message was still reaching them, but, you know, sometimes you got to change, change with times and everything. And early 90s, you know, late 89, you know, rap music was, was, was starting to take its hold. And, you know, they was listening to that and the kids was caught up into that. And, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking and, you know, me listening to rap and everything and realizing the impact that it had, I thought that maybe we can uh, spread our message by way of music. Word, word. So that's that's how the group, you know, moved over into the to, to the light of doing music. OK. How, yeah. the, my my question is, how did you guys get to um, put that music together at Rawway? Because I was in Jersey. I lived in Jersey for a while. And I know. Looking from the outside, Rawway didn't look like a place that could create music. Well, as, as you know, um, the music was actually done. Uh, you know, I had uh, met uh, some people, you know, met a few people. Met a gentleman by the name of David Klein, who was with Red Alert Productions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was going out to Hollywood Records to be the uh, head guy at Hollywood Basic Records. And so, you know, at the time I was reaching out for some funds for fundraising, you know, to purchase some uh, different plaques and things for, you know, clients that had come through the program and might have graduated and wanted to, you know, give them some type of a plaque or something and appreciation. And so I was reaching out and then I, I, I made touch with David Klein and he expressed, uh, Max, well, I'm not going to be around much longer until he was going out. And uh, so the idea popped up in my head right now, oh, he's going to be the head of a, a rap label and everything and then i was thinking about in terms of the program and the message and, and, and the music and the impact that it was having so that's how that started off oh wow okay so uh, there were many mcs through through that I, I, it must have been amazing to do that to to try and help the, the cat you know the kids outside and just spread the message that you don't want to be in this place because i know at, at, at that time Things were getting to the point where it was either you were dead or locked up. And there are choices. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes, you know, the economic choices ain't there, but there are choices. And I think that that's what the message that you guys were giving out, right? That you don't need to be locked up to be cool or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a part of your lifestyle. Exactly. What I, what I wanted to uh, display to them, I wanted to be an example of what not to become. Mm. Or where to be, you know, where to end up. So, you know, the music, uh, you know, it played a very important part and it really helped us to articulate the message that we were trying to get out there. Uh, the music itself, it, it, it really had an impact. And the reason I say that was because of the responses that we got and the interaction that we got with the parents and the kids. So that's mm -hmm. why I know the impact that music has, music save, does save lives. Wow. So you actually talked to some of the parents and, and young youth that, have been helped by your program? Yeah, they were. No, they wow. were writing letters. You know, this it wasn't okay. just from the ones that came through the program. It was like from parents all over the world, kids all over the world. It wasn't just kids; it was adults too. You know, they was writing into it. They was reaching out, wanting to know how they can get in contact with us to tell us, uh, you know, how they thought, you know, that the music was affecting them and, and the impact that it had on them. 
Mm. Wow. So I, I know there was one one of the EPs that you guys put out was actually your, your number in in when you when you were locked up. No, that was actually the number on that EP is my number on that six six zero six four. That number, it's not the number of the EP. That's my number right, on right. that. That's that's. My, that's my actual picture in the mirror right, on there. Right, right. That was my number. Yeah, that's my state number, 66064 that was put on so there. You, so a lot of people, a lot of people thought they could order the album by way of 66064, <laughs> but that wasn't right. the number. That was my number. But there, that was a message right there, you know, the yeah, yeah. It's re- reality at its best, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I don't it's it, it's you identified by number. You ain't, mm-hmm. you know, you ain't identified, you know, by name. Yeah, you're a number. You once you come in there, you become a number, you become a uh, right. state president. Yeah, right. That that's part of taking your your thoughts away and stuff like that, making you you know fall in line, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. So with the you know people um incarcerated have um been in news lately because of this COVID. Um, we want to send send shout outs to them and that we love them and we still you know we still rock with them and stuff like that. What are your thoughts on the prison system in terms of um you know? A couple of things like the, the black and brown incarceration going up and um, the treatment of the prisoners while they're in there and the, the people that are incarcerated <laughs> with the COVID. Well, my thoughts on my head, I'm going to touch on the COVID first. Okay. I don't think I don't think the COVID was, you know, set aside in prison. I don't think it was handled very well. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I think they responded rather late in there as well. And and with that prison being so compact and everybody so congestionalized that it would have a, a, a larger scale on a ratio inside there because everybody was so, you know, living in such mm-hmm. close living quarters and everything. And, um, you know, New Jersey had one of the highest rates in lost prisons, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact. You know, and, um, you know, we did everything out here that I could. Well, I'm going to say myself in Die Gym Pro. Cause I also work with Digen Pro Records, which is a nonprofit record label. Mm-hmm. You know, as for formerly and currently incarcerated, we raised about twenty three thousand prison facial masks through PPE and fundraisers mm-hmm. to send into the prisons throughout the United States. Mm-hmm. So we did what we could do. Right. You no, know, I. You know, we wasn't just sitting back and say, "Well, y'all doing this and doing that," but we took steps. You know, do what we can do to save as many as we could. You know, by sending those uh, people the masks and PPE masks in prison and everything. So, but they handled it. It was rather handledly handled very poor, and they was you know they did take action, but it was already too late by then. By the time they started to take action, right? Is, and, is, uh, 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 sorry, bro. Yeah. Is there any way that people um can can help out with sending masks or or what what can we do? To help out, well, to help out, I believe they can, um, you know, they can write into their the the uh, public leaders and everything, and you know, to encourage them to pay more attention, and as far as the public can write in, you know, to their legislators and different people, to encourage them, you know, that they're people too, they're human too, and that this is a matter that should be handled appropriately because it's also a public safety issue. Because remember, these are the same people that are going to be returning out here at some point. And, you know, we don't want them bringing that right back out here and spreading that. So we want to do everything to protect them while they're in there as well. You know, so they can do a number of things. You know, if they want to donate, they can call into these prisons and call into the state house and tell them that they have masks and different things available that they would like to donate to the system for the purpose of prisoners and different things. And you know, it can go from there. Right, right. That's 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 what we got to do, man. Because you know, our brothers and sisters are out in there, and uh, they're not being treated correctly. You know, so no. we got to we got to look out. Yeah, they have, they're not being treated correctly in a lot of ways. And yeah. that, as you mentioned, the thing on the black and brown. I mean, that's a fact that you know, New Jersey even had one of the highest incarceration rates over any other state as far as ratio and and and, and the people of color. Who was uh, arrested more than any other in the in the state, and that's that's like a known fact, you yeah, know. Well, <laughs> everybody sees the, the the deep south, but it's really the deep north at times, man. Exactly. It, it, yeah. if, you, if, if you notice, the deep north in New Jersey was one of the last 
states itself to abolish uh, uh, slavery. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yes, they always think it's the South, but no, it's right here. It's right here before us. Right. And it continues. <laughs> yeah, that, this day. that's crazy. Day. So, yeah. oh, go ahead, brother. And all these days and time, you wouldn't even think that it would still exist in this day and time, but it does. Yeah, sometimes even worse because they got more more power with the with the laws, even you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. That that's an, that brings up another thing. What's your um? I know your answer <coughs> answer ahead of time, but I'm going to ask anyway. What's your opinion on um incarcerated people being able to vote and felons being able to vote? Like that, they took that away from people. What, what what's your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on that, they know what they were doing. You know, again, that was uh, based off of systematic uh, racism. And they had to, you know, that was by design. And, and, and you figure, because, like, people were also convicted of different crimes could be used to, you know, and be kept as, um, to be used as slaves and everything. That's one of the only things that permitted them to continue to do that. Yeah. You know, it's in so, <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it definitely. And as far as prisoners being uh, able to vote, New Jersey was one of the states I voted for the first time ever in my life. Wow! I'm, I must say that it was a great thing. It's a great feeling to you to to have that. You know, I felt real good about voting and everything. Mm-hmm. And New Jersey had approximately about eighty five thousand guys that who were eligible, former ex offenders, and everybody mm-hmm. who were eligible to vote right and what that does is give them the power and a greater power and more people to help change these laws and things because the very people who are now able to vote are the very people who are able to help in the decision making right right they also have a, a, a bill and trying to pass a bill right now so that all prisoners even incarcerated will be able to vote right now pending that's one of the new uh, challenges right now right you know, it just seems that people forget that everybody makes mistakes or is per, per put in situations that may not be beneficial to them in the future. But, you know, it, it, a lot of these cats, it's not on purpose that they're in there. You know, well, what look I'm at it, yeah, look, 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 look at it, uh, the burden and different things that the COVID uh, put on a lot of people. We never expected anything of its kind to ever happen in life. And, and and look what happened as a result of that, and the major change as a result of that. Yeah, I mean, you got to eat. It forced a lot of people in a lot of different situations. You know, mm. it, it was do or die. It was about survival. Back by popular demand, this cat gear and backpack are here for only a limited time. Stop by and shop at thiscapgear.bigcartel.com. What are your thoughts today on the private prison system and like how that, that they treat the uh, offenders that are incarcerated? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I actually don't believe that they should have private prisons. And some of the states abolish that private prisons as far as the, as far as the states, you know. But the fact of them having private prisons is just as worse as state prisons because they're not as regulated as other prisons are. Exactly. And they also have um, data. They also have a ratio of how many those beds must be kept filled in their contracting things. So, for example, say if you had a lockup unit and it has about 300 beds in that lockup unit and you got a general population of about 1,000. All right. Well, in the contract, it says all these beds must be filled or the st- state or whoever has to reimburse that private prison. So what they would do and tell those officers and things in the prison would have to go around to create situations and circumstances to send guys to lock up to keep those beds filled because they're not going to have a mixed population. Because isolation and lock up and solitary in different locations of the jail. So they they create scenarios in which to keep those beds filled. Mm. And to uh, keep people longer. The, there's people, people like you are necessary because you tell it, tell it like it is. You ain't sugarcoating nothing. You, you're not trying to make yourself look better or anybody look better. I, you're just telling the truth. 
there's no way that I can make myself look better. You know, I mean, <laughs> I just went in there and, and served my time. You know, I don't know how that's going to make me look better by trying to do what I can do. It's not going to make me look any better. It's just I'm just trying to do the right thing. Word, word. Yeah. So, yeah, that's dope. So let's get away from talking about the, the incarceration and all that. You, your work with youth, it continues to this day, correct? Yes. Yes, absolutely. With what, what organization do you do it? solo or are you part of an organization no I, I don't i don't work with a particular organization but i do work with uh camden county reentry and uh, i am a nos which is a new entry opportunity specialist with the camden county reentry uh committee in camden county and like i said i also work with die jim crow you know i also do individual things i go around i do presentations mm-hmm. From time to time as you've seen i also go and do work with ralph mcdaniel or different community events. But no, I'm not tied to any one particular organization. And I go where it's needed at. Right. But Sometimes it's better that way. Yeah. And one of the, um, you have a, uh, one of the organizations now, right now in Camden County, is called the uh, Transformative J Initiative, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, what they do is, it's, it's one of the first of a kind. They go, people that are being released from prison, they go and they meet them at the gate on their release day right. and they take them right there from that point. They take them clothes, uh, cars, anything that anybody have to donate. They take them back and they get the information of what's needed, jobs or anything. So, right. you know, you have a lot of different organizations now who are out there on the grounds fighting every day. You know, so it's a little different now because it's more so the people are taking initiative to do those things. That's very necessary. I actually saw a news report about that in California where they let cats right out, right out the, the, the jail with nothing and bring them to Skid Row with no help to trying to get a job or anything to continue that cycle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's terrible, man. So you're, you're doing God's work, if I, if I may say so, man, because, you know, we, we all the same, man, you know, and to be treated like that, for something that you you you, you did because of necess- necessity or you know, whatever that that's not right, man. That's definitely not right. Yeah, I mean, it definitely doesn't give them the right to treat you like inhuman or some animal because you made a, a, a mistake or a bad choice or a bad decision. You know, regardless of whatever the circumstances was. I mean, we all have situations. Some of us perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. I don't want to be perfect. And. Mm-hmm. We going, you know, we going to trip every now and then. And, and the main fact is, you know, for the per- for us to be there for each other when we do these types of things. Nice. Yeah, that's what's up. So um, you said you've gotten worldwide support. That's crazy um, from this album and from your work. Um, is there is it basically the same situation all, o- all over the planet that like poverty and, and, and race is a is a, you know, a factor in being incarcerated? Yeah, I, I think it is most definitely, yes, poverty and race. Poverty does play a, a major part in people being incarcerated. Right. Yeah, we, we got to definitely change that, man. I mean, it, it, there's a work ahead for sure. Um, so you said you don't work with organizations mainly. If somebody wanted to reach out to you for a speaking engagement or, you know, what, just to contact you for some inspiration or whatever, how can they ca- catch you? I'm, I'm on uh, I'm on social media. I'm on uh, Facebook. It's Max Melvin's. Okay. I'm on uh, Instagram at Melvin782. You know they can reach out to me. You know my right, email we'll, and everything. We're gonna put and, that. At, we're gonna put that at the bottom so people can reach out to you, man. Your work is so important, man. And I, you know, I'm really appreciative for the fact that you came on. It's been a minute. Um, finally, our schedules, you know, came came together and uh. I, I really appreciate this, Mo, Maxwell. You know, it, it's tremendous, man. You, the work you're doing is tremendous. And, you know, there are people out there that pay attention, man, you know? Well, you know, I, I appreciate being able to do what I do. You know, the little that I do, do I, you know, um, I, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. It becomes tiring at times. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, like this evening, I was very exhausted this evening. You know, I had kind of like not forgot about this. I know that this was coming, but it just came so fast, and you know, I just returned from New York uh, yesterday from uh, doing an interview. Mm. 
Okay. And, you know, it's, it's time sometimes. For me, I'm not getting any younger. I'm getting, you know, a little older. We all but, uh, are. <laughs> still, yeah, I'm still getting around, though, you know. Yeah. So, well, like I and, said, man, we, we really appreciate it, man. And, um, yo, just keep doing what you're doing, brother. We, we really appreciate it. If you got any last words, any shout outs, you know, any message you want to give, the floor is yours, brother. I don't have any particular message other than to say, you know, that, you know, the struggles will always be there. You know, it's, we're going to be faced with many challenges and obstacles. You know, you're just going to have to learn how to navigate through those and to get by and get through them and be willing to, you know, help out our fellow man and, you know, to identify with each other that we are one and the same, you know, that nobody's better than nobody. Yes. You know? Yes. That's the truth. That, and and I, I'll just keep telling my story, you know, as long as I can and keep saying the same thing over and over, you know, until I get it through people's heads. I mean, if it reaches some, it reaches them. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to keep on. Right. You're an inspiration, my brother. I keep saying it. Thank you. Like I said, thank you for coming on. I know you were you were tired, but the, the struggle continues, man. And thank you. We're going to put all your contact info on. And uh, I, I'm going to say it again. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep, right, keep, man, I appreciate keep like watching. You know, we, we I, listen to you. Thank you. And I appreciate the visual caffeine. And, you know, it's an honor to be on here, you know, and I appreciate y'all very much. Thank Anytime you, I'm here. All right, man. Well, I'll, I'm going to take you up on that. All right. Take me up. I'm All right, here. brother. All right. All right thank peace. you very much, sir. All right. Take peace. it easy, man. Salute. Peace. All right. Peace. <laughs> That was Maxwell Melvin's on Visual Caffeine, episode 99, the Lifers Group. He does work to help the youth, to help our incarcerated brothers and sisters. Thank you very much again. Um, you can catch Visual Caffeine at www.viscaf.com or Visual Caffeine TV on YouTube. Um, Dr. Von Rollalot on Mixcloud. And we got backpacks out, viscafgear.bigcartel.com. And, uh, yo, just keep watching. We got episode 100 is going to be special. We love you. Thank you for standing by and support the culture. Peace.